It is 7 o'clock, so I'll go ahead and call our regular meeting for January 12, 2023, uh, to order and turn things over to Commissioner Johnson, lead us in the vacation. Let's pray. Holy Father, please be with us as we go about the town's business. Be with our country as we go through uh, ultimate changes on a daily basis. Uh, be with our uh, the folks who need your guiding hand, either them being sick or lost. Uh, be with our uh, the folks who protect us on a daily basis. And just be with our families as we go to and fro. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Next up is the approval of the agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. All right. Got a person a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? All right. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? All right. Uh, next up, we've got uh, the swearing in of Youngsville police officers. Uh, Chief, I'll kind of turn it over to you to give a formal introduction and then we'll go from there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, members of the board. It's my pleasure tonight to introduce you the two newest members of our team. Mr. Mayor, if you could come up, please, sir. So, do you need the... I'd like to introduce to you Officer David Serikaski and Officer Gabriel Fenero. Officer Serikaski served eight years with the U.S. military. Six years of that was with the U.S. Navy, where he attained the rank of Petty Officer Second Class E-5. After serving with the Navy, Officer Serikowski served two years with the West Virginia National Guard. He also worked nearly two years as a detention officer for Durham County Sheriff's Office. Officer Fenera has over four years of law enforcement experience, serving first with the Lake Royale Company Police and next with the Franklin County Sheriff's Office before joining us here in Youngstown. Mr. Mayor, if you do the honors, please, sir. Absolutely. Raise your right hand, please. I, in section A, uh, uh, do, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will be alert and vigilant that I will be alert and vigilant to enforce the criminal laws to enforce the criminal laws of this state of this state that I will not be influenced that I will not be influenced in any matter in any matter on account of personal bias or prejudice on account of personal bias or prejudice that I will support and maintain that I support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States the Constitution and laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. The Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially, faithfully and impartially discharge and execute, discharge and execute the duties of my office, the duties of my office as a law enforcement officer, as a law enforcement officer, according to the best of my skill, according to the best of my skill, abilities and judgment. Abilities and judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, guys. Thank you, sir. And I believe we've got a couple members of the audience that would like to come up and pin our new officers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we can turn around. <laughs> And Captain Lemons, uh, kind of leads you along where you need to be. All right, we're a photo opportunity. You come up, you come up. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, picture time. Any yeah. family members in here that want to jump in? Have you ever been 
Nature. Oh, chance, go. Can I get in? Yeah. I'm trying to break my skin. He's too damn skinny. He's <laughs> like looking through. There we go. Okay. Jared just got blocked out of the I'm glad. <laughs> Not that far. <laughs> All right, and then uh, next up we have uh, item four presentation of achievement awards uh, for Officer uh, Barrington Simpson and Gabriel Fenera. Oh, could I doubt? As the mayor said, I also have the pleasure tonight to recognize two of our officers for outstanding performance and merit to a service. I believe you'll be just as proud as I was and touched even when you hear the story of these two servant of these two officers and the selfless service uh, that they did for our team. And if I could get Corporal Robinson to come up and do the honors, please. Good evening. So on December 9th, 2022, Officer Simpson and Officer Panera responded to a welfare check in town, and they found a town of Yellowstone resident in her vehicle, and she was in need of assistance. The officers helped the citizen back into her home where they found her in need of household items and groceries. The officers determined she intended to go to the hair salon and the grocery store, but was unable to operate her vehicle. In speaking with her, the officers realized that she had been in her vehicle for several hours before their arrival. The officers quickly developed a plan to assist the, assist, to assist the citizen and see that she received the necessary care. The officers made sure she was in a was safe in her residence and then they purchased groceries for her using their own funds. Um, in addition, after they purchased the groceries, they went back and they uh, went through went through her uh, kitchen and they put the groceries away and even threw, threw out rotted items and, and stuff. Uh, on December 14, 2022, um, Officer Simpson and Officer Fenera arranged for uh, the same citizen to go to a local hair salon with an all expense paid visit. Officer Simpson and Officer Fenera's willingness to go above and beyond their duties is a testament to their character and embodiment of the epic values of the Austin Police Department. Officer Simpson and Officer Panera's selfless service and devotion to duty are in keeping with the highest traditions of law enforcement service. Their compassion for the welfare and dignity of our citizens reflects great credit upon themselves, the town of Youngsville, and the state of North Carolina. <laughs> We shake and take. Is that how we do that? Shake. Shake and take. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Very well done. Congratulations, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> 
always great to to hear and be able to support and acknowledge the people who keep us safe. So uh, thanks again, gentlemen. Um, moving along into <clears throat> IMF. Uh, presentation of proclamation, Children's Dental Health Month, uh, Wake Preparatory Academy. Uh, the proclamation reads as such, Children's Dental Health Month, whereas the future is to a large measure dependent on the good health of our families. Whereas good health can be achieved in part through good dental habits learned early and reinforced throughout life, be it resolved that I, Mayor Fonzie A. Flowers of Youngsville, North Carolina, thereby proclaimed the month of February as Children's Dental Health Month and urge that all citizens and community organizations join in this observance. And witness hereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of North Carolina to be affixed this 12th day of January, 2023. Um, and Emily, I mean, Madam Clerk, I appreciate you taking care of this so I can deliver this tomorrow. Um, and we'll move along into item six, which is the public hearings. And the public hearings portion is actually going to be continued to February 9th, 2023. Um, the, the action at hand was a request to rezone property on Fleming Road across from Fleming Farm Road. Um, the reason why we're going to continue this is the uh, planning um, the planning board did not have a chance to meet. They didn't have a quorum at the last uh, meeting, so they didn't have any chances to kind of go through and review and make a decision to give us a recommendation. So um, having said that, we'll move along into citizens' comments. Madam Clerk, did anyone register online to There's speak? One person has registered, and you should have that. Up oh, here, okay. All right, uh, Patrick Kelly, Youngsville Animal Hospital. Is that the gentleman who just stepped up? I don't know. Probably not. Anybody online? I don't reckon you got confused when I said there was no public hearings. I, I wonder if they read Carrie Johnson's article today thinking that we were going to give him the hook if, if that was him um i mean i want to give him his what was his name patrick kelly thank you i know sometimes it is confusing for first time mm -hmm. public hearing versus citizen right yeah maybe this is also uh, oh, no, it's the number one district. fire district. You know that I received specifically regarding the fire district. Yeah. And so I did enter him in online based on the email to speak. Okay. Um, All right. I, I've never met him, so I couldn't tell you what he looked like, but based on the emails, he did want to speak. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll. A week or so ago, so you may have forgotten. Okay. And, and that's fair, too. We'll see. We'll give Chief another moment and see. And then we can come back to that if need be. We have a winner. Yep. Looks like it. Yeah, that was him. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there we go. <laughs> uh, I slacked out. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, sorry about the confusion. I, I know some, oftentimes when we talk about public hearings and citizens' comments, uh, I think a lot of times it, it, get, it can sometimes be confusing. So um, we're at the citizens' comment section now. You're the only person who registered to speak, so oh. the floor is yours. It's all me. Okay. <clears throat> I apologize for walking out. I really didn't think we should continue. I was <laughs> going to go to some other meeting, I guess, at a different time. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, uh, I just wanted to, I guess, uh, talk to you specifically about the zoning uh, issue, the zoning change. Uh, we, I currently represent uh, one of the... Uh, I guess downtown uh, businesses, the uh, vet office, uh, vet office uh, hospital, I guess it is. Uh, they're looking to expand their operations. Uh, they're looking to add uh, uh, about uh, 800 square feet, I guess, to their property. Uh, that will expand their surgery department, um, as well as some uh, administrative offices that they dearly need. 
Um, currently, the zoning uh, is in the fire district, uh, number one, uh, which would require or does require, in my understanding, uh, very, very expensive um, non combustible materials uh, to be placed, I guess, in the construction itself, uh, which is there, like I said, are very, very expensive. Um, we are, it, you know, those expenses obviously will get passed down to the community, unfortunately, um, and we don't feel that they're necessary. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll leave it there unless you guys have any questions for me. No, I think we're good. Um, we will certainly uh, discuss it here in a few more um, action items. Um, so if you wanted to stick around and, and be, you know, Absolutely. Hear, hear how things roll out, then uh, be good to go. Unless any of the commissioners did have Just a question. Point of sure. clarification uh, is this the one in downtown or the one off of? Yeah. That's uh, the one right downtown. Bailey? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Bailey. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you again for the opportunity. And thanks for driving me down. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. All right, uh, item eight is the consent agenda. The action requested here is to approve consent agenda as submitted. Very much to approve. Second. All right, we've got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, there is no old business to discuss. We'll move along into uh, number 10, new business. Uh, item A is a request to rezone property on Fleming Road across from Fleming Farm Road. The action requested here is to continue that to the February 9th, 2023 board meeting. Do I hear a motion to continue to the February 9th, 2023 board meeting? Motion to continue. Second. All right, got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? All right, continue to February 9th, 2023. Uh, item B is amend Youngsville Code of Ordinance, Section 2.301, Fire Limits, and Section 2.301.1, Amendment to Fire District. Uh, action requested here is to adopt the changes to the Code of Ordinances, adopting a reduced number one fire district. Um, Mr. Page, was there anything that you wanted to add to that prior to? I saw some of the notes that you had written in the packet. Um, but I didn't know if there was anything in particular that you wanted to address before we call for a vote. Uh, just that it was originally designed to um, require masonry and construction, and over time it was viewed that they wanted to make it safer and safer for good reason, uh, particularly in high rises. The number one fire district has the same requirements in downtown Raleigh as it does for downtown Youngsville, and as such, what it was doing was it was restricting development in downtown Youngsville, and actually, because of that, incentivizing development on US-1 and other places where we didn't want it. So by virtue of reducing the number one fire district to our own parking lot that we own over behind the old town hall, that has the uh, um, elevated building characteristics and the rest of downtown has to still meet all the building code, has to still meet all the fire safety, all the fire code stuff. It just doesn't have to meet the elevated fire code that you would expect for a 15 or a 50 story building. Okay, fair enough. Um, any questions, comments, concerns from the commissioners? Okay, hearing none, again, the uh, action requested here is to adopt changes to the Code of Ordinances, adopting a reduced number one fire district. Do I hear a motion to approve? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Second. All right, we've got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, and that motion carries. Uh, item C, Presentation of Annexation Petition 2022-4, Holden Village. Um, so this is the property on Holden Road that reaches um, from Holden Road all the way back towards Jeffrey Way. Um, they, we saw them probably six to eight months ago for a development agreement, um, and they are now ready to move forward. Um, both uh, town administrator and town attorney helped investigate the signatures while I was out. All signatures and paperwork is in order. Okay. And then moving along into item D, resolution directing clerk to investigate a petition received under North Carolina General Statutes 160A-31, Holden Village 2022-4. Action requested here is to adopt the resolution. Move to adopt the resolution. 
Second. All right. We've got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? All right. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, item E, presentation of Certificate of Sufficiency for Annexation, Holden Village 2022-4. Um, like I said, I was able to have enough time to investigate with the help of the attorney and the town administrator. All signatures are in order of um, ownership and needs and bounds description. Okay. So move along in item F. Resolution fixing date of public hearing on question of annexation pursuant to North Carolina General Statutes 160A-31, Holden Village 2022-4. The action requested here is to adopt resolution fixing date of public hearing for February 9, 2023. Move to adopt resolution. All right. Sorry. Got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? All right. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? Uh, motion carries. Um, item G, presentation of annexation petition 2022 5, Rolling Meadows. This is the um, development we recently saw. It's the one that connects from Hicks Road all the way back to Fleming Road. Um, thank you again to the attorney and the town administrator for their help while I was out. All signatures and paperwork are in order. Okay, so move along into <clears throat> item H, resolution directing clerk to investigate a petition received under North Carolina General Statutes 160A-31, Rolling Meadows, 2022-2022. Dash five, the action requested here is to adopt the resolution. Move to adopt resolution. Move second. All right, we've got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? All right, and item I, presentation of certificate of sufficiency for annexation, Rolling Meadows 2022-5. Um, the signatures of the owners are all appropriate and the meets and bounds description match the annexation. All right. So moving along into item J is resolution fixing date of public hearing on question of annexation pursuant to North Carolina General Statutes 160A-31, Rolling Meadows 2022-5. Action requested here is to adopt resolution fixing date of public hearing for February 9, 2023. Move to adopt resolution. Second. All right. We've got a first and a second. Is there any discussion before we move to vote? All right. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? That also carries unanimously. Uh, reports and other business. I don't really have anything. I hope everyone had a, a great Christmas and a great new year. I'm excited about 2023 and, and what the new year brings. Um, you know, 23, there was a famous um, athlete that wore that number. Um, a lot of people call him the goat. A lot of people call him the goat. So I'll say 2023 for Town of Youngs is going to be the year of the goat. So um, that's all I really had. I hope everyone is. I'm kind of getting over a little bit of a head cold. Um, so I, I hope everyone is staying healthy and well and all that stuff. I'm past being getting anybody sick. So don't don't fret. Um, but. Uh, just hope everyone has a great year, and I'm excited about what the what the new year is going to bring us. So, um, Commissioner Red. No, December was great. The tree lighting was lovely. Thank you for the great T-shirt. <laughs> Fantastic. New Year's was lovely, and I'm uh, I'm looking forward to 2023 planning for the sesquicentennial. That's fun stuff. Um, yeah. No, that's all I have. All right, Commissioner Percy. Uh, I don't have anything for today. All right, Commissioner Brain. Uh, Carl Warkomsky reached out to me today to let me know that the date for the uh, trash pickup this year has been set for April 1st. That's a Saturday. I'm sure we'll see plenty more notices go out on social media. Um, he did say that they were going to identify some of the um, more, uh, uh, what do I want to say, the more littered <laughs> Roads. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but uh, try and get those uh, ahead of the day um, and, and do those on separate events so we're not spending all day trying to get those. Um, what day was that again? April 1st. And I want to say they usually start around 9 or 10, but I would wait until the official yeah. announcement. So, um, our plan to be out there as much as I can. We usually have soccer during that time. So Just put it on the calendar. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be around somewhere. 
Uh, and that's all I had. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Yeah, I just got one thing. Uh, I was approached um, twice the day, being one of them, about uh, dump trucks, loaded dump trucks on the side streets. How, does that fall in the purveyance as far as being big trucks? Because they're coming up down at Winston Street as well. They're cutting They're cutting it uh, Railroad Street and going up to Franklin to beat the Try to get to the three-way, to the four-way stop. Yes, sir. The, the prohibitions and weight limits still apply. Okay, so uh, just out of my yard, talking to this, talking to a citizen today, two full dump trucks came by. One was going about forty-five because I looked at the sign. Yes, sir. Uh, so we we've got to get we've got to get that under control. I mean, I, and I'm not saying it just because I live on that street. There are other people that live on that street as well, and that road is not wide enough. To handle a dump truck and a car coming by at the same time. I completely understand. We've got some ongoing conversations I have with the captains of the police department. As a matter of fact, Captain Lugsy reached out to the Department of Transportation uh, today, uh, Enforcement Division, and we should have, I'm hoping in the coming week, uh, either someone with the Department of Motor Vehicles or with North Carolina Highway Patrol and their weight scale so they can actually do some. Enforcement with teeth, as they put it, uh, which would, and our officers are working in conjunction with that. Yeah, I think one of the citizens actually stopped one of the trucks and the guy basically told her, you know, please can't do anything to me. So, and I know she probably you came know, up, I know very, she probably came up here. That would be a very interesting perspective if, if we catch more one. Good, because I, it's, it's basically on a daily basis, and it's not got anything to do with our, uh, our folks that are on Fleming. Those guys are going, I and mean, it's all different types. Oh, um, um, but to the two that came by when I happened to be outside today at like three thirty, four o'clock, were full to the brim with with limbs and trees and everything else, and people were having, actually having to pull off and stop so that guy so those guys could go by. Yes, sir. I'm hoping uh, with with minimal effort and the presence of our guys and especially with the Department of Transportation out there giving us a hand with that. <laughs> um, the word and the commercial industry gets around pretty pretty quickly with those guys with uh, uh, commercial driver's license. So ho hopefully we can get out there. I, I think a lot of it would go away with just a, a good presence. And, yes. that, and that's on both sides of the fence. Not for only the folks who are violating, but for the people who live on the streets to see that there are actually some action in place. And, you know, I live there. I, 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 I put up and do, you know, I, I, I'm a guy, so it really doesn't bother me. But, you know, there are folks on that street that have children. There are older folks on that street, the people trying to turn. You, I mean, in the morning, you can't even turn out to go either direction. Uh, I can't turn out my driveway going right back toward Cross Street because I it, it's not it, it's not wide enough for me to turn when a car is coming. So I can understand their um, plight. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll and you got folks you got folks sitting out there every day watching that stuff. So I'm, I'm just telling you that. Well, thank you for reaching out to the DOT and other people to try to come in and really make a team of it. That's yeah. that's good. Because when they turn on that street, they got nowhere else to go but right down it. So I mean, they, they're not gonna be able to back up and get away from the right. DOT guy, right? So they got to go right by. Him. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get them to a place where we can roll the scales out. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Good there. Thank you. That's it, Mayor. All right. Thank you, sir. And uh, Commissioner Wiggins? I don't have anything. Okay. All right. Uh, anything from our esteemed town attorney? Um, at the request of Captain Lemons, we put together an information security and data breach response policy for the town. Um, we had also uh, opted to increase cybersecurity coverage um, and assistance after a cyber attack. Uh, so we're working on increasing the town's ability to respond to any kind of attack like that. Um, actually, two days ago, about 13 registered deeds offices were, were hit with cyber attacks. Um, learned. So this is sort of an ongoing risk and thankfully uh, YPD has been working to make sure that we are um, ready to respond if, if something like that were to happen. Outstanding. All right, anything else? That's all, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, any additional uh, reports or the business from staff? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I just had a couple of them. Um, Deputy Clerk Bose Adams has brought to my attention that the 
contract for our website has, uh, we've now reached the stage where they're going to give us a free website design because we've been a client of theirs for so long. Um, they'll just be really updating some of the security in the background, whatever. We're not going to do a major rewrite of it. It's not a big, uh, total new website, um, but it will um, change some of the handshakes and stuff that your devices do with the website to try and upgrade the security there. Um, but in particular, she recommended that this might be a good time for us to roll out the youngsvillenc.gov portion of our website rather than the townofyoungsville.org if that's something that the um, commission is interested in. And then um, if we wanted to update with photos of the commissioners and the mayor, um, Fonzie, yours is on there, excuse me, Mayor Flyers, yours is on there. <laughs> uh, uh, a more updated picture might might be beneficial there. And then we could have one for each of the commissioners as well. One more. more. The picture, right there. Now, there definitely isn't one with more hair. Uh, the only thing that it might be is a lot less gray in, in the facial hair. Um, I, I was waiting to see if Robbie's or, or <laughs> Emily's would try to pull that up. So, um, no, I mean, I, I like the idea. I, you know, um, I, a no hair day is a no hair day. I, I, what, it's what God gave me, man. Good, good thing I got a good sense of humor. So, um, no, I mean, I like the, the idea of, of keeping it kind of short and clean, right? So, youngsvillenc.gov is a heck of a lot easier to type in than town of Youngsville. I mean, it, it's just got a better flow to it. So, um, what would the time frame be to, to make that transition happen? You can go to it today and it works. Okay. In terms of how long it'll take for the website to be updated uh, fully, I'll, I'll defer to the deputy clerk. Uh, we're currently in redesign uh, mode. I have a meeting next week uh, with them in reference to some preferences that uh, I uh, had a discussion with them with in reference to the colors and our logo and such. Okay. Um, we're looking at uh, four to five months. Okay. Before we go live. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think that time frame works. Uh, works well. Gives the chance to transition kind of off of the platform where we are and up fit into a new platform. So, okay. Um, any additional updates from staff? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, we are all very proud of our Christmas parade, right? So the tree lighting ceremony, I thought, was. Um, uh, as close to flawless as possible this year. And when the tree plugged in, I mean, it was it was bright, it looked great, it was amazing. On that note, um, we did not set aside funds in the budget for additional Christmas decorations along Main Street, uh, but it was recommended by Clerk Heard that it might be a great idea for us to unveil some new Christmas decorations on our new Main Street as we get into the uh, holiday season next year. And to that end, um, there is a significant discount for purchasing Christmas decorations in January. Nobody wants to keep them for the next year. Um, so it was recommended that we perhaps use some of our contingency money to then align that with a future budget amendment um, to purchase uh, somewhere between um, seven and ten thousand dollars worth of Christmas lights to brighten up Main Street for that time of year. Okay. If that was the consensus of the board, I'd move forward with that and we'd have it in whatever budget amendment number three, which would probably come before you guys in June or July. I'm on board with it. Uh, I think I'd already expressed the expansion. What uh, just like three of them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think we replace the, um, the 10 snowflakes that we have, we would place with 10 other lighted ornaments. The uh, banners are still in good condition. Um, but with the 33% off sale, it's a, it's a huge discount in January. So we can get. So we're buying it for our normal vendor. We're buying it for our normal vendor, correct? Yes. For, okay. We still use Moscow. Moscow. So we're just going to replace it. So you know, they're going to make sure we look good. Yeah, that's true. So we're just replacing what we Just the snowflakes. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Banners, you know, we might replace at a later point, but they're good enough to have not. But we're not like anymore. adding new decorations. We're just replacing what we have. Right. Um, so I would get rid of the snowflakes and would like to get a different design. Slide it up. Because you can get... <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I wish we could do the, like this. Across, but I know there's so many trucks. trucks. <laughs> yeah. I would we're like to get so pretty. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, ones like that, but they would have color. They would be green and red for the Christmas trees and things like that. Um, for almost the same prices. There's there's definitely a design that we need to stay away from, um, and I can talk to you about that after the meeting. I don't think we need to bring it up in here, but um, I've seen him, I've seen him in other towns, and it is not very reflective of the uh, Christmas cheer. Okay. I'll just try to put it as mildly as possible. So um, I like the idea. I mean, if we're going to replace the snowflakes there, maybe we can find other avenues for those snowflakes maybe to expand out maybe up 1A or, or down 1A or something. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, again, I'm good with it. Um, Commissioner Johnson seems to be good with it. I don't know that I want to spend the kind of money that he's referring to, but... Uh, <laughs> he's going to have a reindeer or two, man. Come on. <laughs> if y'all gave me a huge budget, I, I could light this down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are the amazing things. <laughs> What's the definition of huge budget? So okay. if you stick me with 10 grand, I can make the town look great. If you give me the 50 or whatever, I can make the town and Lenny Park and Mitchell Park, and we can go in other directions. But I also want to get new banners on Main Street uh, fairly after the Main Street project in the next fiscal year as well. So I say we go baby steps with uh, the, the 50,000. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I'm okay with 10,000 to update and upgrade. Uh, again, if we're gonna do it, let's do it right. We got the longest running Christmas parade in the state for a reason. Uh, something that we should all be proud of, and I mean, but if we spend twenty thousand, we get a fifty percent discount on everything, right? <laughs> and how it works? No, that actually would have been I a good bar that that be a good bargaining chip right there. <laughs> um, are there any commissioners that have any angst with spending that money to upfit and upgrade our decorations? No. I just heard Larry say, like, yeah, we weren't going, we weren't going big enough. <laughs> Is that what he said? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm with him. So I said to call the town to start calling. It's been a little sparse on Main Street. I was wondering if a few more would make it look a little better. Sure, yeah. yeah. So maybe not $50,000. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do with the 7 to 10, and if I have extra left over, we can grab a few more. But okay. yeah, I can make it work in a decent budget. It sounds like you have your consensus. Yes, sir. Is that what is that what you heard too? Okay. Yes, All right. Is that what you heard too, Madam Clerk? Okay. All right. I'll show them to you before I buy them. All right. Again, there's only one that we just definitely need to, and as soon as I show you a picture of it, you'll understand why. So um okay, moving along, uh closed session. Uh, we do need to go into closed session tonight. Uh so item A is North Carolina General Statutes 143 318 6 for personnel. Um, got a little performance evaluation that we want to get through, and um, I'll entertain a motion to enter into closed session. I forgot an item, if you don't mind. Motion to go into closed session. We'll come back and get it. All right, so I got a first. Second. And a second. Uh, any discussion before we move to vote? All right, hearing none, all in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? All right, we are now in closed session as of 7.38. Um, kind of fun. It's 825. We're back from closed session. Um, we didn't take action in closed session, so we could come out here and take action out here. Um, and I hear a motion on the table. Um, I'll make a motion to amend the contract of the town administrator to adjust the salary. All right, got a first, second, and a second. Okay, uh, first and a second. Any discussion before we vote? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So that is unanimous. Uh, item number 13 is uh, to adjourn. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Got a first, second, and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. 826. We adjusted right. it down.